Hello everyone and welcome back. There are few opportunities in someone's career in which you can really make a positive change. And this happens, for example, when you get to talk one-on-one -on -one with someone very famous and very accomplished in your field. That person one day can become your mentor, can become your collaborator, can write a reference letter for you, and maybe can even offer you a job. However, these people tend to be very busy. And many people, of course, as you can imagine, want to talk to them. So generally, you're going to have at most 30 seconds in order to introduce yourself and make a positive impression. And that's why these talks are called elevator pitch. You only have the time for the elevator to reach the level at which you need to get off in order to complete your talk. So in this video, I want to cover how you can make the most out of these 30 seconds, how you can be effective, concise, make a good impression, and also show knowledge and potential. At the end of the video, I'm going to provide an example of how I would address an elevator pitch if I were a student. So make sure that you stick until the end to watch the entire video. And finally, before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe and share this content if you find it useful. Thank you very much, and let's start. The first thing to realize about elevator pitches is that they cannot be improvised. You need to spend time thinking and preparing them so that you have a mental structure of what you want to say and how you want to say it and which aspect of your work you want to highlight. And actually, it is a good idea to prepare different elevator pitches depending on who is the person you're talking to. So, for example, if you are talking to a professor that works in academia, then you may want to highlight certain aspects of your work. While if you're talking to someone that works in industry and may have different interests, then maybe you may want to highlight different aspects. Secondly, you want to discuss both your achievements as well as provide some depth of the work that you have done. The achievements, such as, for example, some of the top papers that you have published or some awards that you have received can talk very well about you when you have such a short time and you don't have too much time to discuss exactly what you have done. But also, you don't want to just sound like, hey, I got published this paper, hey, I received this award, and that's it, without providing any technical depth. So you want to mention some more specific things that show that you actually know the technical background and technical knowledge and technical aspects that you have exploited in this research work. It is actually here a good idea to tailor those technical aspects depending on the person that you're talking to so you can actually pick on their attention better if you mention the right things. A common mistake that I've seen in elevator pitches is to give too many technical details. So in 30 seconds, you don't have the time to dig into the details of your work. So there is a big chance that your talk is going to become too long, that you're going to lose the interest of the person you're talking to, and you're going to become boring. So the best thing is that, that can happen is that you find the right balance of technical details, that you tailor the technical details that you want to mention to that person's research interest, and then that person asks you a question, and then you have the chance to dig deeper and provide even more technical background about what you have done. The next suggestion is a comment that actually goes way beyond elevator pitches. And so that show that you are at the same time confident, but also humble. Because those, in my experience, are the best people to work with. People that actually know what they're doing, they're confident about what they're doing, but at the same time, they're willing to listen, willing to accept criticism, and willing to accept suggestions in order to improve what we have done. So this, I think, really speaks very well about yourself and opens even additional possibilities. If you not just show to be a great scientist with a lot of great background, but also a good person that is very easy to interact with. Finally, you should conclude your elevator pitch by creating a connection with that person, leaving some sort of open door that you can exploit in the future. So, for example, you can mention, would you mind if I send you an email with my CV mentioning this conversation? So maybe we can find some ways of collaborating in the future. Or maybe you may mention that, hey, if you have some opportunities for me to review some of the papers that you assign to reviewers, I would be very happy to do so. So you can actually start creating a professional connection and collaboration that then in the future can develop into something even more consistent. You can also mention that, hey, I will be graduating in the next uh, few months. If you have any opening available, I would be very happy to be considered to work in your lab. So maybe if you don't mind, I can send you an email with my CV. Most likely, many people in that position would be very happy to say yes to these questions. And so you already have a way of interacting with them in the future. Another extra bonus suggestion that just came to my mind is to not be overly pleasing. 
especially when you don't really have enough knowledge about the person you're talking to to actually pick what you want to mention in those cases. So if you meet that person and say, hey, I read your work that was published I don't know, in so-and-so conference, and you don't really know that work, or maybe you're not sure if there is a work that is relevant to that person, because I mean, these people collaborate with many different individuals, and not all papers have the same importance. And maybe that could be a paper that a collaborator did most of their work, and this person doesn't even remember that they published that paper. So make sure to find the right balance to show knowledge and interest in the person that you're talking to, but at the same time, you don't want to be overly pleasing. It is now the time to provide you an example of what I think could be a good elevator pitch. So here the situation that I'm imagining that I'm a student, I'm meeting someone that is famous and very well accomplished in my field, and I have just 30 seconds in order to make a good impression with the hope that I can create some sort of connection with that person and then collaborate with them in the future. So I'm going to have 30 seconds only. I set the timer on my phone. And so now let's start. So here we go. Three, two, one, go. Hi, I'm Simone Silvestri, a PhD student in this department working with Professor X. And it was great to listen to your talk this morning. If you don't mind, I would like to use this opportunity for introducing myself. So in my PhD dissertation, I work on Internet of Things solutions applied to smart agriculture. And I published a few papers that appeared in Infocom and Percom as well in the past few years. And generally, in these papers, we tend to use advanced optimization techniques such as submodular function approximation combined with advanced machine learning techniques such as deep reinforcement learning. And I will be graduating in the next couple of semesters. If you have an opening in your lab, I would really happy to be considered. So if you don't mind, I can send you my CV in an email. So here I wanted to first create a personal connection with this person if, for example, he knew my advisor. I also wanted to give an impression I'm working on a cool problem and I've published papers in top places. Not all your papers should be in such places, but give an highlight of what are your best achievements in order to impress the person. Then I delve into some technical aspects such as submodular function approximation and deep reinforcement learning just to give an idea that in these papers we have a good technical contribution. And then finally I concluded by creating a connection and saying that you know I would be graduating soon and then I would be very happy to be considered for a position in your lab. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know in the comment below. Thank you very much and see you next time.